Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. And welcome to episode two of What Are They Emulating? The series where I break down some of the most popular analog modeling plugins and decipher what piece of famous analog gear they're attempting to emulate. In episode one, we looked at the six analog emulation modules of the Logic Pro stock compressor plugin. And thank you so much for the awesome support on that video. If you haven't already checked it out, I'll link it in the description box below the like button. So in the comment section for that video, there was an overwhelming favorite for what plugin should be covered in episode two. So without further ado, let's dive into the Logic Pro Vintage EQ collection. This is in fact three different plugins that emulate four different analog hardware EQs. And it comes as part of the stock plugins in Logic Pro. You'll find them here in the EQ section of the plugin menu under Vintage EQ Collection. The first plugin is called Vintage Console EQ, and it is emulating a Neve 1073 mic preamp and EQ module. While the Logic plugin is only replicating the EQ part of this legendary piece of gear, the original unit was in fact an entire module that included both a microphone preamp and an equalizer, and it was designed to be part of a mixing console, with the A88 Wessex console being the first to utilize the 1073 modules. Rupert Neve formed Neve Electronics in 1961 and began designing and building mixing consoles for studios around the world. Rupert Neve is a titan of the music industry. His designs continue to be some of the most sought after pieces of vintage equipment out there, and they have also inspired countless copies and emulations. Rupert would leave Neve Electronics in 1975, and 10 years later, he founded another famous pro audio brand, Focusrite. Yeah, this guy is a legend. The 1073 was quite revolutionary at the time of its inception, as it used silicon-based transistors, which were a new and exciting technology at the time. This gave the 1073 reliable performance and low noise. These transistors enabled Rupert to design a unique two transistor gain stage that resulted in both a high gain level and a very low noise floor. And this is a very important combination for recording music. But the special sauce that's being emulated here in Logic Pro is found in the EQ section of the module. After the wonderful microphone preamp came an inductor-based EQ. And on the original 1073 modules, there was a low shelf, a mid-bell curve, and a high shelf. All with fixed frequencies pre-selected for optimized use with musical applications. This design had the unintended benefits of imparting analog saturation when engaged. And this is of course that special warm but aggressive Neve sound that is lusted over by engineers to this day. And here in the Logic Pro Vintage Console EQ, we have the three bands of the original, low shelf, mid bell, and high shelf. But we also have the additional of a low cut here on the left as well as the ability to select the frequencies of the low shelf and mid bell bands. This functionality is not without precedent though, as the 1073 continued to evolve over time, it would receive a low cut band, as well as frequency selection in the low and mid bands. But it continues to, as does this plugin, have a fixed high shelf at 12K. And two features found only on the plugin are first, the ability to select any frequency within the ranges. On the original hardware unit, it was a stepped selector. And then also with these buttons here at the top, you can bypass each band independently of each other. A Neve style EQ plugin such as the Vintage Console EQ is my go-to EQ for additive EQ on vocals. It can bring warmth to the bottom end of a vocal without causing mud, bring clarity and presence to the top end of a vocal without causing harshness. It is just such a pleasing and musical sounding EQ. I'm really a sucker for the Neve sound. The next 
plugin in the Vintage EQ collection is called Vintage Graphic EQ, and it is an emulation of the API 560 Graphic EQ. This famous EQ originated in API consoles in the 60s and 70s, but has gone on to define an entire category of audio gear pioneered by API, the 500 series. Automated Processes Incorporated was founded in 1969 by Lou Lindauer and Saul Walker, and their mixing consoles went on to achieve considerable popularity in recording studios across the 1970s. Known for their high-quality, modular designs and punchy sound, API achieved many firsts in the pro audio world, including the first computer programmable console with automation of EQ, sends, pans, and faders. So we as DAW-based engineers owe a huge debt of gratitude to API. So no discussion of API would be complete without the 500 series format, of which the 560 EQ is a part of. The 500 series format is a standardized format of modular signal processors, which can be combined by the user into a 500 series chassis that provides power to the modules. The original lineup of the 500 series modules included the 512C preamp, the 525 and 527 compressors, the 550A and 550B semi-parametric EQs, and the 560 graphic EQ. In the mid-70s, engineers began making custom chassis for the 500 series gear and began the now long-running tradition of 500 series gear racks. The first commercially available chassis was released in 1978, and the legacy has just grown from there. Nowadays, there are 500 series options available from just about every pro audio company you can think of, and the API Lunchbox chassis is found in studios large and small the world over. The 560 Graphic EQ includes 10 bands of EQ with 12 dBs of boost or cut on each band. And what makes this EQ truly unique is API's proportional Q design. This design intuitively widens the Q at lower boost or cut levels and narrows it at higher settings. While it's hard to test just how well Apple has emulated the proportional Q of the 560 EQ, the vintage graphic EQ definitely brings the look, feel, and punch of the API 560. It also includes one cool extra feature not found in the original hardware, and that's this tune setting here. This allows you to change the frequencies that each band work on, so you can be more precise in your EQ moves and really tailor the EQ to your specific track. I actually find it slightly odd that Apple chose to emulate the 560 EQ instead of its more famous brother, the 550, but there's no doubt it is a very cool and useful option. API's characteristic punchy sound makes it a great option on drums. I like to use it on either the drum bus for some subtle enhancement, or on the kick or snare to really bring out the attack in the high end. And the final plugin, the Vintage Tube EQ, is a two for one. The top section is emulating the Pulse Technologies EQ P1A, and the bottom section is the MEQ5. Pulse Technologies, more commonly known as Pultec, was founded in New Jersey in 1953 by Eugene Schenk and Ali Summerlin. They hand-built their first units to the highest quality, and the company really took off in 1955 when the recording industry switched from 78 RPM vinyl records to 33 and one-third RPM long play records. This necessitated higher quality audio equipment, and Pultec was there to answer the call with the EQP-1. The Pultec EQP-1 was the first passive program equalizer to hit the market, and it was first installed in MGM Studios in New York. It was really a game changer because of its lossless gain feature. The genius behind the EQP-1 was to employ a tube-based makeup gain amp to reintroduce the 16 dBs lost in a typical passive EQ setup. 
Not only did this make the EQP1 simple to use, it also had the benefit of running the signal through those makeup gain tubes, which imparted a wonderful coloration to the sound that everyone still loves today. Pultec would continue to refine the design of the EQP-1, which eventually resulted in the EQP-1A, which is the specific model being emulated here in Logic. The EQP-1A has the same basic design, but added more selectable frequency bands in the high and low end circuits, as well as adding a high shelf attenuation feature. The only problem with the EQP-1 is that it did not contain control for the mid-range frequencies. So Pultec followed up the EQP-1 with a mid-range specific tube EQ known as the MEQ-5. This, in combination with the EQP-1, offered engineers of the day unprecedented control over the frequency balance of their mixes. And the original units continue to be some of the most desirable pieces of vintage audio gear out there, fetching truly high-watering prices. Thankfully, we have a multitude of homages and plug-in emulations to choose from, and a great one comes free with Logic Pro. The Vintage 2BQ has done an excellent job of faithfully recreating the layout and functions of the EQP-1A and the MEQ-5. The top section of the plugin represents the EQP-1A. These three knobs on the left are the low-end section. And apply a low-shelf EQ. You select the frequency to boost or cut with this lower knob, and the boost is done on the top left knob, and the cut, or in EQP1 parlance the attenuation, is done on the right knob. The middle three knobs are for the high end, and you can see here things are set up slightly differently. We can only choose to boost the high end in this section, but unlike the low end section, we can specify the bandwidth or Q of this bell curve boost. And the final section all the way to the right is the high shelf attenuation. You select the frequency with the lower knob and the amount of cut with the top knob. And this will reduce the frequencies above the selected frequency in a shelving EQ shape. The bottom portion of the Vintage Tube EQ plugin represents the Pultec MEQ5. And here we have three pairs of knobs to EQ our mid-range frequencies. The left two knobs provide a low mid, from 200 hertz to 1K boost. The middle two knobs give us a full mid-range frequency cut option, and the final two knobs give you a high mid boost option. All of the bands on the MEQ5 are bell curves, also known as parametric, and they are fixed cues. Although on the original units, the cue would vary slightly depending on the amount of boost or cut applied. And also we have these two power switches on the left that allow you to bypass each unit model separately from the other. And a video about a Pultec would not be complete without an explanation of the famous Pultec trick. This is one of my favorite things to do on bass guitar or really any source that needs some warmth and body in the low end without becoming muddy. This trick comes from a misuse of the original hardware. Much like the all buttons in trick on the 1176, it was discovered by engineers who deliberately went against manufacturer instruction and unlocked a secret weapon in the hardware. The Pultec trick is very simple to deploy. Just boost and attenuate the low frequency section of the EQP-1A by the same amount. When you do this, you get a very unique and musically pleasing result. This happens because the boost has more gain than the cut does, and the two controls are slightly offset from the selected frequency. So when you combine them, instead of getting an end result of zero like you might expect, you get a pleasing subtle boost to the low end, which adds a lot of body to the selected frequency range. But then you also get a slight dip in the mid-range frequencies, which can take away some muddiness. Check out what it looks like on this frequency analyzer just running a white noise signal. I'll set the frequency to 100 and then boost and cut by the max amount so we can really see the effect. You see we get this nice boost to the low end at 100 hertz and below, but then we also get this gentle dip here centered around 500 hertz. And this trick can just do magical things. Check out what it sounds like on this bass guitar.
And the last thing we need to discuss with the Vintage EQ Collection plugins is this far right section. And this is where Logic Pro has taken the functionality of these impressive hardware emulations to the next level. To start, the drive knob allows you to customize how much analog saturation the plugin is applying to your signal. And we can see here by running a simple sine wave through the plugin that even without any EQ applied, the plugin is adding frequency information. And as we boost one of the EQ bands, you see the frequency analyzer really light up and show just how much extra harmonic content is being imparted into your sound. And this is a great thing. This is what gives analog gear its colorful sound. Adding pleasing harmonic distortion to the source is what analog saturation is all about. But the really neat thing about the plugin in Logic Pro is that we can choose between the three different saturation modes with any of the three plugins. And you do that with this output model selector right below the drive knob. This allows us to combine the saturation characteristics of one unit with the EQ functionality of another unit. Want to try the Poltec trick with a Neve sound? It's possible in the Logic Vintage EQ collection. And you can see on the frequency analyzers, I switch between the three output models. They certainly have their own unique characteristics. They really are modeling different things. To take it one step further, we can also choose between two phase modes. In natural phase mode, the cut boost phase shifts of the original hardware units are emulated. So with all equalizers, both analog and digital, they will introduce phase shifts near the EQ point. This is just a natural part of how EQ filters work. While this is typically not a problem at all, in certain unique circumstances, the phase shift can be audible and undesirable. And in the digital world, we have a fix for this, phase linear EQs. And in the vintage EQ plugins, you can switch from natural phase to linear phase. In my experience, these issues mostly happen when applying low or high cut filters to one of a multi-miked or parallel chained source. These two snare mics are a really good example. I'll apply a low cut at 150 hertz to just the snare top mic. But if I play both mics together, listen to the difference in the low end of the snare sound when I switch to linear phase mode. Suddenly there is way more low end punch to the sound. This is because the phase shift of a low cut is quite dramatic and can result in almost a 180 degrees phase shift along the steepest part of the filter. In this example, it is resulting in a dramatic loss in low end information in the snare bottom mic when the signals are combined, even though I've only applied the EQ cut to the snare top mic. This is because the EQ filter has created a phase shift between the two signals resulting in cancellation, almost as if there is another phantom EQ cut happening on the snare bottom mic. While this is an extreme example, it is a good thing to be aware of when EQing multi-tracked or multi-mic sources such as drums. And it's great that Logic has included the phase linear option in the vintage EQ collection. Certainly something you would not get in the analog EQs. Just before we wrap up, I've got a free gift for you to help you advance with your mixing and production in Logic Pro. So a topic that I get asked about all the time and one that causes a lot of confusion in Logic Pro are buses. So I have created the definitive guide to buses in Logic Pro. And in it, you will learn what buses are, how to use them, and advanced busing techniques. There's truly something there for everyone, so hit the link in the description box below and download your free copy today. There we go, those are the four famous analog hardware EQs being emulated in the three plugins of Logic Pro's stock vintage EQ collection. In my opinion, these are fantastic plugin emulations, especially considering that they are stock in Logic Pro. They really add a whole new dimension to the kind of color and vibe you can bring to your sounds without breaking the bank. 
And they also allow you to dip your toes into some pretty advanced mixing techniques like harmonic saturation and phase linear EQing. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the Vintage EQ collection. I really want to keep this series going, so drop a comment below and let me know what analog emulating plugin I should cover in the next episode. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.